like is like politics or like movements or and usually I always feel like it's sort of like I don't know I never feel like that's positive but that's just me that's what we were, we were talking about this I kind of know like our other little sessions we had with you guys we just kind of didn't wing them but like we just kind of winged them I guess like so with this we kind of sat down went over things a little bit more um, and we kind of talked about like sort of um, what we kind of thought about propaganda um, but I'll speak personally like I've always sort of thought of it as like someone trying to promote something to me that maybe I wouldn't want or need. I always thought of this element of control, control. that it's trying to manipulate yeah. control. Yeah. Oh, so. oh, so you Some shape or form, like you consumed it. That's like saying I ate I ate strawberries last night and it didn't affect me. Well, it's calories it's in like, my body. It's like looking at a person who's attractive and going, "Oh, they exist," and then walking on. I don't really think about that effect. Maybe not. Real quick, maybe not consciously. <coughs> you know, oh, that, but it has an effect on you. I mean, you interacted with them in some shape or form. I, I recognize their existence. Think so. When I think of art, I feel like it will stem some sort of emotion or feeling, but I feel like propaganda takes it one step farther and causes you to actually like move to do something. And I don't think all art does that. I think I think all art will influence you and affect you, but I don't think it will all cause you to take action upon something. Yeah. Um, I feel like there's kind of like <laughs> it's almost unwritten rules, I guess you would say, about propaganda. So I feel like there's a difference between just and, Maybe all are trying to get their its opinion across um, in propaganda. I think propaganda one rule is like there has to be some kind of poli like political stigma behind it, and also feel like propaganda is more like a group of people, like an institution, trying to put its opinion on like a single person. Well, I think maybe you know, a lot of times artwork can just be like a single person 
I'm trying to put your opinion on another person. I don't think that you yeah. deserve propaganda. Are you saying that, can I clarify this? Did you say that oh, it has to have political? Well, I don't think maybe. What do you I, mean by that? Right. Well, I mean, I feel like a lot of times it has a political stigma or some okay. kind of like social cause that's trying to put out there. That's otherwise, like, controversial. I mean, again, it's sort of go back to our art argument. Like, we try to sort of, sort of put a term into a box that but is so vague. If everything's propaganda and has the purpose to try and sway our minds, then for your definition of art, nothing's art. Okay, I'm cool with that. <laughs> <laughs> Jones or type designers, and they went to them and said, we want a typeface for the president. 
And they're like, well, we did this typeface for G GQ, you know, like the Men Magazine GQ. We did this typeface for GQ for a couple of their articles, and they're like, perfect. We love it. It's bold, it's wide, it's strong. After he won, it was everywhere. CNN used it, MSNBC used it, I think everybody could box, sorry. Uh, you know, like, use it. it was splattered everywhere. And nobody really, if you don't like type design or design, you never would have noticed it, but it became, like, I kind of would watch him like, oh my god, there it is again, there's Gotham again. It was everywhere. People just attached themselves to it because it's strong and I guess it was even more. Yeah, I never would have noticed yeah, it. Now that I'm thinking about it, it you're right. You're, where's your device on and off? Where's your device on and off? Yes, that's Gotham. That's, that's Gotham. Yeah, it's just a great typeface, too, so there's that. Okay. All right, we should probably back up. Okay, back up. Yeah. So, all right, I'm going to let you all sit down now.
that society was very conformist, and they were not. Like, they didn't have a voice, and they created a voice for themselves. Um, and, you know, is it propaganda? I'm like, yeah, like, I think it is. But for me, it was a positive. Like, it shaped me into the person I am today. And then you go to art school, everyone listened to this stuff, and well, I was in a punk hardcore band, believe it or not, no one believes that, right? So, sang these songs and yelled and screamed, but it was a voice. I mean, they, 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 I was trying to put it in perspective for her. Up until this time period, if you were, typically <coughs> music, guitar, bass, drums, no one, okay, like you weren't, you weren't in a band. Like, the bands didn't exist. Like, you didn't just get your buddies together and start a band. Like, that was on her. If you did, you played like, like, Led Zeppelin cover songs, or like Fleetwood Mac cover songs. Like you didn't make your own music. And these guys and girls, like they were young and they were angry and nobody was listening to them and they didn't dress like everybody else and they just picked up a guitar and they're like, this is, we're gonna make music. Anybody know the term straight edge? Straight edge, straight edge, straight edge. Okay, it started with this man right here. This guy right here started straight edge. Have you ever been to a concert where they put an X on your hands? That man right there started that whole movement. That one person right here. And what's fascinating about this guy, Ian Mackay from DC, like all that straight edge, all this was all sung to about 10 of the friends. Like all the, these lyrics, I'm singing at you, Bill. I'm, I'm angry at you, Bill. Like I'm yelling at you. And it became a whole movement. And I, I, I'm like, where is this movement today? Like why aren't people doing this today? But in my mind, I, like thinking about it, this is positive propaganda. Like, it, it is directly singing about issues and people and movements and thoughts in a very aggressive but uh, communal way. Can I interrupt? Yeah. I don't think it's positive. I think it's propaganda. I don't think it's positive. Really? No. Interesting. <laughs> it's angry. It's okay. Like, that's okay. That's how you've been. You think it's positive? Yeah. I mean, there are worse outlets. That... Yes, there are, aren't there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What else?
if we're in a show and people are pushing and shoving and she falls down, I'm going to stop and help her up. She's my friend. So it's a, it was, a, it was a, an outlet for people that were frustrated and felt like they had no voice, and this was their voice. And maybe things like the internet changed things, maybe, and Twitter, and when you can... Ended up becoming an obsession for me. 
the more, well, I thought the more stickers that are out there, the more important it seems, the more important it seems, the more people want to know, and you built something from nothing, and I, uh, you know, I, I, I get to just watch this process unfold. Of course, I thought that process was going to take about three months, not 20 years, but um, anyway. Um, did you, did, did you, when, when was the moment where you kind of connected the sticker campaign with Obey? Well, that was much later. You know, at first I thought, um, at first I thought this was such a um, spontaneous creation. I couldn't, I couldn't deviate from it, or else it would lose the magic charm that I did not understand the, the, the exact formula of. So I was, I was very insecure, but I was in, uh, still am, by the way. Um, I. I, I um, you know, I was, uh, I was very intrigued by the process of image repetition, and I started to do a little bit of reading. And I was a huge fan of the Sex Pistols already, and had read a little bit about their, um, their interest in situationism, the idea that um, people have become uh, numb because through through repetition, and they uh, they need they need um, unexpected spectacles to um, give them a new perspective. And then I also read about Martin Heidegger's theory of phenomenology, which is, I think, similar in, in concept, that um, there are things that are unique that re can reawaken a sense of wonder about one's environment. And I felt that my sticker was achieving that, even though it, it didn't have any lofty ambitions originally. And over time, I thought, well, all right, Andre the Giant is not really, I don't care about wrestling, this is just an inside joke. I need to figure out a way to evolve something that though it started off silly, I actually think has some more profound implications. So, you know, first I just got crazy printing a lot of stickers, thousands of them. Um, then I saw a film called They Live. Um, this is a still from that film. Um, has anyone seen that film? Okay, so we have a few um, B or C movie fans in the house. Um, I, uh, it's a, it's, that it's a film here? that I thought was a really great yeah, um, uh, analog to my project in that um, it was a very silly film, but it, it raised some fairly profound um, issues. And the, the, the premise of the film is Rowdy Roddy Piper, also coincidentally a, a, a wrestler, who's the protagonist, is... Um, is, is out of work and stumbles on this, this benevolent sort of uh, homeless person's uh, uh, reintegration into society camp. And um, the leader is a guy that looks like Ray Charles with these sun, with sunglasses on. Then all of a sudden the riot cops come and tear the place down unexpectedly. And he thinks, why? Such a good benevolent organization. Why would, why would the powers that be want to destroy it? Um, and then he goes and, he's, and he sifts through the wreckage and finds these sunglasses puts on the sunglasses and realizes when he looks at ads that they don't say vacation in the Bahamas, they say consume, sleep, watch television, obey. He looks at someone paying for something with money and it says this is your God on it. You see a thread here? Like all these things end up showing back up in my work. So um, I, uh, this is your God motif. Um, so I, I uh, but the one that really stuck out to me was obey. The idea that people kind of follow the path of least resistance in life, and they're, they're obedient just not to rock the boat, but when they're confronted with the direct command to obey, it's very unsettling. And people you know, usually react very, very poorly to that command. Um, so what the people that benefit from, uh, from other, you know, making an audience obedient, what they do is they package the command to obey in a, in a, in a much more, uh, you know, lovely, uh, lovely presentation than the direct command to obey. So my thought was, if I put obey with this, this is really, people are going to want to know what it is. And just getting people to question, having to confront and question obedience, I thought was a very important step. Because uh, a, a lot of what I felt was problematic um, politically had to do with uh, people being, being apathetic or complacent because they don't feel like there's enough at stake. But when they really feel that they're trying to, that, that someone's trying to control them, I think it, it uh, definitely inspires action frequently. Okay. Can I ask yes. you a question? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we started off with these stickers. Yeah, yeah. That was a joke. Can you back, back back up to where the, the first sticker? Just kind of zoom back if you can, like to where the first white, white and black sticker is. Um, keep going, keep going. We started off with these stickers as a joke. Yeah. We 
don't need to play. I just want to have the sticker image. Up. He talks about it being like it was just spontaneous. Right. And I almost feel like even though Obey, like how it yeah. evolved into Obey, was kind of spontaneous too because of what he was inspired by. Right. So back to this whole idea of intention. Yeah. And maybe this is for you too. I don't know. Whoever wants to, you can answer my question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to talk um, about this. So is it propaganda if, like, there's no intention really there? Like, he was just being spontaneous. Right. I don't know. What do you think? Christian, what do you think? Can you repeat the question again? Sure. So, yeah, go ahead. Um, so he was saying that he was being spontaneous and he didn't really, he had no intention of creating this. It kind of evolved into what we know as Obey. He started off with just the stickers of Andre the Giant as a joke. Um, is it propaganda? I feel like um, news, uh, newspaper in the little town that he was from, or I don't know if Britain, Rhode Island, yeah, yeah, uh, or whatnot. Um, they saw something new and they wanted to cover it, and then uh, that made him think that it was possible. And I feel like the idea that thinking that getting an idea out there was possible made him want it to mean something. So I feel like he just wanted to. Do something that would create a change and open people's eyes later, but it started with just a simple joke. I'm not sure what else. Watch him 
swing his backpack around, open it, take a, this sticker, and smack it on the back to stop sign and keep walking. And I was like, the guy's legit. Like, he's still doing this. Like, he's still doing what he did 30 years ago. Propaganda, I don't know. Like, I, the more we talk about this and watch this, like, I get really amped about it. So you guys are kind of like, do it for the movie. But, like, I'm like, because this whole Obey thing, if you listen to what he's talking about, it's against propaganda. Like, he's against the idea of advertising and against the idea of being controlled. He's propagating. So why is he doing? Because he's trying to fight against it. Like, he's, yes? Um, we you talk about how we kind of get bored by this image here, but... Uh, for our generation, a bit more, uh, a bit more hot topic. Um, uh -huh. For those of us who know the memes, uh -huh. um, you're gonna you're gonna laugh at this one. Um, our generation does a lot of memes, a lot of like user created images. Mm -hmm. They're just kind of fun. They're, they're jokes. They're not really meant to be anything right. except for a joke. And uh, are memes propaganda though? Well, there was a meme. Of, it's Pepe the Frog, and I'm not lying here. The media took that image and they made it into like what they call a hate symbol. And they basically spread the idea that every time you see this image, it's a hate symbol. So the generations who didn't understand what it was, that it was just a joke, it's just something that's like kind of funny, it's like Kermit the Frog like reference. Uh, they, the people who understood it took it as a joke, while the media who blew it up into a hate symbol propaganda theme took it a diff <coughs> completely different direction. Does anyone in this room think
Russian Revolution. When it was written, people, publishers looked at it and put it on the children's section of the library. No joke, this is true. Um, because they said this is a cute story about animals in a farm, um, you know, and they're talking to each other. Um, and people had no idea necessarily until you started really reading into it and who old major was and things like that, that it was propaganda. Um, so, yes, he intended for this to be propaganda, um, but where does our analysis kind of fit in, into that and in understanding propaganda? Tori. I feel like when it comes to propaganda, it's not about measuring about measuring the effects of it. So this may have not started out as successful propaganda because people didn't realize it was about the Russian Revolution and they thought of it as a kid's book. That like poster uh, from Shepard Perry um, of Hope and Obama, that he didn't intend for that to be anything else but an image of some guy that he liked. And that the effect of it turned it into propaganda is what we'll extrapolate from an image or a piece of art that makes it propaganda. And that's why I don't think you can necessarily measure it. Like, yes, I agree, you can be wrong about the intent of the, an artist, because that is like the intent was this. But you can't be wrong about like what it does. Well, and, and sometimes in books, like, I've had students analyze books and then play what the author said. Um, like, if you've ever read all my class at Red Fair High School, if you want to forget which summary you have. But you've read it. Okay. Um, well, um, that book, I had a recording of Ray Bradbury who said, you know, um, I didn't mean this symbolically. Like sometimes we read into things and, you know, maybe assume that it's propaganda and it's not, or maybe assume something about a piece of literature and it's not. Um, there's a quote where he said, like, sometimes a cigar is just a cigar and it's literature doesn't mean anything, or the color blue is just the color blue, it's not being symbolic. So, yes? I feel like we've come to the point now where, like the propaganda, you know when you're writing an essay and stuff, it doesn't matter what your point is, as long as you can prove that that is your point. Yeah. I feel like that's kind of how this works with this. So it doesn't matter what the author's intent was, it matters how he wants to show and how we're seeing it. it. And how we're seeing it. So if you can prove that it was this, then it's that. Like, it just has the same... Saying like it doesn't matter really what the original purpose was. It's how, yeah, it's I totally how agree with that. 100%. Yeah. Like, let me ask you this. I just sort of have this sort of this my, how my mind works. Why are we doing this this today? Lesson? This lesson. Today? Yeah. Um, so she came to me with this lesson, not the other way around. Yeah. yeah. So, so what? Why? What? Why are we? Why are? Why do you think we're doing this? Um, because in this art unit, you know, I've got to look at art from all different perspectives and angles. Okay. Um, and I think there's a huge section of art whether it be music, literature, um, design, mm -hmm. just physical art, sculpture, that is propaganda. Okay. So we've got to explore, in TOK, okay, you've got to explore the why. Right. You know, what's the purpose behind that? Right. Art. So I, I am here in this space, because what I think is really important is that you're not a, um, you're not just a consumer. Um, I think that you should be an educated, aware consumer. Um, I think that, kind of like the art argument, I don't really care what's art. I don't really care. Like, I care about what I'm looking at, I care about what I'm experiencing, I care about going to that hardcore show and being, I was telling her, I can't, I go to concerts all the time still today. Like, I'm a whole guy, whatever, I still got it. I can't not be, I have to be at the very front. I have to stand at the very, at the national, at the very front. You go to any concert I've been to, you can see my giant head. Because I'm like the tallest guy, and I'm like, look, and you can see me in the YouTube video. Because I feel like I'm there with the, I'm part of the experience. I, I will never go to a concert with you. you I just want to, no, I'd yeah. be miserable up front. You would be miserable. Yeah. I'd make sure you didn't get hurt, though. Okay. So there you go. <laughs> so you can, I am, I am, that, that, those shows we looked at earlier, they were not about guys or girls getting up on a stage and playing music. It was about being part of that experience. And the audience is as much as part of that experience as the artists are. I hope that you just don't like blindly consume. And I tell my students in my class, I'm like, use your skills for good, not evil. 
Like, I, I, am, I am against, I don't like the idea of, of corporations or people controlling my thoughts and making me do what I want to do. If I, go, I know that when I go to Wawa and I spend $4 on a bottle of water to like the packaging, I know why I'm doing that. No one's, no one's tricked me into buying that bottle of water. I know that when I buy that Boss Spartan, I like the glass, I like the type. I, I'm, I'm an educated consumer. I think we're here, to, uh, when I walk away, I hope that you are conscious of the things that are around you. That's really my goal. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't really care that we define propaganda, because I don't think you can. I think that it's, that you are aware, even talking about this, like I read an article, has anyone seen the illustrated movie of this uh, animal farm? It came out like in the 50s, 50s early 60s. Um, I read an article in one of my time magazines that if you get a chance, you can like look at the, look at the clip really quick. Uh, Disney did an animated uh, movie of this. And um, I read this article that um, members of the government at that time came to the Disney Studios and sat with the illustrators and made sure that the pigs looked Russian, that they looked like Lenin. They, they sat there and said, that's not Lenin enough. You need to make it look more like Lenin. And I'm like, what? Like, that's like, pro like yeah. Like, but are you aware of it? If you watch it, are you aware of it? And that's kind of like my goal with this is that, is that you become more aware of when you watch TV and the commercials on, do you, do you, do you, do you love UNC basketball and the sponsors Nike, whoever it is, sorry, that you buy the Nike shoes. And I don't, I don't see anything wrong with that as long as you're aware. As long as you, I, I know, I, I, I know that I'm going to go today, I'm going to spend $35 with $15 shipping from England on two water bottles for my bike from a company like, I know. I know why I'm making that stupid amount of money, but I know why that purchase is happening. I know that I like the type, I like the color, I like the way it's made. Is it a good product? Sure. I'm aware, and I think that's, the, for me, the whole point of this. Yes. No, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, I looked at their faces when you mentioned that the, about the pigs and looking like Stalin. Yeah. Um, and a lot of you were horrified at that. Why? Thank you, Dr. Ruth. Thank you. Is that okay? Alex. You're talking about um, <coughs> Abby's favorite company or Disney, who's like super family oriented, and they're almost influencing um, during the Cold War era, influencing children to have these pigs as an image of, oh, I, they see them later in life, oh my god, it's like a pig I, in this movie I watch. Yeah. Yeah. And later on, or even in that time, like it's brainwashed. Brainwashed. It is totally brainwashing. It's totally, <laughs> it's, I mean, you, that's a strong word, but it is. I mean, they, they, they're, they're general or a comrade, whatever, so that when people watch it, they, the music, the whole thing, the whole production of that whole movie is all like, nothing warm and fuzzy about it, really. Yeah. Questions? Oh, I was just going to say, like, you say that like, your goal is to make us, I guess, a little less ignorant. Not ignorant, it's just to so, uh, be aware. That's, my, that's what I mean. I don't, I, it has nothing to do with um, intelligence. It's just being in a, in a, in a in open person, like when you look at, you can't analyze everything all day. I can't, I can't live in a world where I'm constantly identifying typography. Like you would be over, you'd be overwhelmed. But my, my, what is it? You're a, if you're experiencing something that you are at least somewhat aware of what you're experiencing. Scott, keep going. Oh, I was just gonna say if you were making the argument, like you need to be aware of things rather than like aware of what you're doing, aware of what I just don't feel like that's. Like, it's kind of like there's an argument in philosophy where you have like well, there's different levels of authenticity. You have a higher level of authenticity and a lower level of authenticity. And most people alienate towards like most people go towards the lower form of authenticity because it's faster pleasure, it's faster mm -hmm. getting what you want. But you want to aspire to have more higher authenticity because that's what forms strong bonds or strong relationships and you will remember who's there girlfriend for you. Mm -hmm. And like your goal in life is to get an equal balance of both forms of authenticity. But as we go through the unit, we learn that it's not completely possible. You can't have, you're, you're going to have to sacrifice something for another. So I feel like even, I just feel like no matter what situation you're in, you're never going to achieve that like level of what you're aspiring to be. Yeah, I, can, I, I get what you're, I, can, I, I get it, like I, I get it. You can't always be, I get it. But, you know, I, I, like we were saying at the very beginning of class, like I, I feel like you are experiencing things 
constantly, we're in this space, this temperature, the light, everything's in the mix. Like you can't, like I will go home tonight and we're sleep. Yeah, yeah, but just, I mean, that that you become, maybe, maybe I'll say this, you become more aware is my goal. Not aware, but more aware. So do you think that, I just feel like we're bombarded with images in our society because we've got the internet, we have mm -hmm. social media. Mm -hmm. Do you think we become, as a society, immune to propaganda? Like, that we just, like, don't listen to it anymore? I don't think so at all. Um, we, in French, we looked at uh, some of the more famous North Korean propaganda. Mm -hmm where their people in North Korea don't feel that it's propaganda at all. Right. They, don't they, don't even, they don't understand it. They, right. they feel that when they have a picture of uh, Kim Jong-il and he's in like the god, he's in the sun, he's got the rays shining on the great people. It's just, it's just an image of their leader, their god. How but it should be. When us Americans and everybody else in the world looks at it, we see propaganda. We say they think of their leader as a god. And we're immune to it, but it, it's not like everybody is immune to it. It's not a overall. Yeah, we picked this 
that you define the term or you're aware of it happening? I think if you define the term to include things that isn't everything, you can be more aware of it. So do, I do really honestly believe that defining the term is 